In this video, I will demonstrate how to create a transaction automation script for that transaction code CJ20N. Here in this Excel spreadsheet, I have a set of data for several projects that I need to create. As I scroll over here, you're going to notice that I also need to account for planning elements, accounting assignment elements, as well as billing elements. Now I'm just going to minimize this Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to open up Process Runner. Process Runner is a standalone application. It can be installed on your desktop, Citrix, NVIDIA, VMware, Hyper-V. Best of all, nothing needs to be installed on your SAP backend. Now I'm going to push New here. Now I can select from the four technologies of Process Runner. And since I'm creating the transaction automation script, I'm just going to put in now the uh, T code CJ20N. Now I'm going to click the Start Recording button. Now I can select from any SAP system across my SAP landscape. So of course normally you're going to start out in your quality environment, your sandbox environment. Then you just simply log in. I'm going to use a traditional username and password, but Process Runner does work with single sign-on, SNC, SSO1, SSO2, as well as HTTP and HTTPS authentication. So now that I'm logged in here, I'm now going to start recording at an API level. So each of the screens that I navigate and each of the fields on the screens are going to be recorded. I could uh, surf the web or check my, you know, check an email message. That would not be recorded. Only what I'm doing in SAP right now is being recorded. So from here, I'm going to go to the corner. I'm going to select project, new, and then project. Now from here, I'm going to enter in the project definition. And then also I'll enter in the project profile. And now I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Now I'm going to fill in the start date and the end date. Now I'm going to hit enter again on my keyboard. Now I'm going here to this project structure description and I'm going to left click, I'm sorry, right click, and then I'm going to select create WBS element. So there's a right click there, select the create WBS element. And now I'm just going to stretch out my SAP uh, interface a little bit. I need to make a menu option available to me. So now I'm going to select uh, this WBS element overview and I'm going to left click here. And now from here, I'm going to select this top row and then I'm going to select add line. So I'm going to fill in the WBS element. Next, I'm going to go with the description. I'll just move a little bit over here so you can see that. Now from here, I just need to scroll over a little bit so we can uh, see the short ID. So let me just adjust this SAP GUI again here. Now I need to fill in the planning element as well as the billing element. And from here now I'm going to go to the organization tab. And let's stretch this out again, fill in that location. And then we have the functional area. And now I'm going to go to the responsibilities tab. From here, I'm going to fill in the person responsible number. Now I'm going to double click on this WBS element here, value. 
Now I'm just going to expand this uh, interface here. I'm going to deselect this account assessment element. Now I'm going to go to the assignments tab, but I'm going to do it from here. I'm going to select it from this folder menu here. Now from here, I'm going to fill in the profit center and I'm going to retype this data. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want this field to be recorded as active. If I just left the value in here and did not fill in the profit center number, then it would be recorded as an inactive field. So I want to make that an active field. All right, so now that I've got my profit center data, I'm going to go to the user fields tab. Here we're going to fill in the indication. And then we have the phase. I'm going to go to the formulation. I'm just going to scroll over a bit here, bring my data up here. So we have the priority and now the therapeutic area. And we have the geography. Now I need to fill in the dates here. So my first date for the committee. And then finally for the approval. And I'm going to check these boxes. Now I need to go back to the basic data tab. And from here, I'm just going to check planning element, account assessment element, and billing element. Now that this is done, I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to bring up process runner and we'll just uh, save this. I'm just going to call this CJ20N demo. Now I'm in the mapping tab of Process Runner, and so I want to link this to the external Excel file, this file down here. So from this drop down here, I'm going to select external Excel. This is just doing a little refresh here. Now I need to just finish mapping, I just make sure that everything is mapped in the proper column. So I have my project definition coming from column A, my project profile from B, my project plan start date from C, and then the finish date is D. And then we have this work breakdown structure element. So this is actually going to come from column F here. And then we have the short element description. So that short description is coming from column G. And I'm deliberately uh, skipping over this level in project, this uh, column E, because this data is not necessary for me. So that's why I'm skipping that. Now we have the indicator for the planning element. Now we have the WS element short identification. It's going to be from H. We have the indicator from the planning element. We're going to switch that to uh, column I instead of that uh, checkbox for the X. Indicator for the billing element is J. Then we have the location K, functional area L, number of the person responsible is coming from M. And if I scroll down here and we'll just just the view over a bit here. We have that profit center is from N and the first user field O and then the first user defined is P, second user field Q. We have the second user field for the 
quantity, that length WBS element is R. We have the third, third user field S, fourth user defined field T, and then we have the field date, first user field date for the WBS element is going to be T, and then the second user field date is V. And then if we scroll down here, we have the indicator for the planning element. And then the account assignment element. And then the billing element. And now that this is finished out, I'm going to click Save. I go over to my Home tab, change my Start row, make that as high a row as I want, as Excel has a 1.3 million row limit. I'm just going to make that 50 here. And now I'm going to go ahead and press the Run button. And we should see that SAP messaging now write to the external Excel spreadsheet. And I'm getting an error that I expected, this error calling a method of the tree control. Now what this is, we've done a transaction recording, but this is for an enjoy transaction. So if I bring up Process Runner here, it actually recognizes this error and it gives me an auto fix solution. So now all I need to do, this little pop up just says process runners determine a situation in which launch SAP GUI must be enabled. Do you want to fix this error? Effect of this change would be visible when you run this file the next time. I'm going to click yes here and I'm just going to save this now. And so now I'm going to press the run button again. And, and what we, what we, what's happened now is this launch SAP GUI box has now been checked by process runner for me. So had I originally checked that box, then I would have not received that error message. But I just wanted to show you the capability of Process Runner, that it can recognize certain errors and will make auto fix corrections for you. So now I'm going to press the Run button here again, and we should see this, er uh, this error cleared up, and we should see these projects created. So that first project that already exists, that's because when we initially created the transaction automation script, we inputted that data into SAP, but you can see that these other projects have been created. And so that is how to create a transaction automation script for the T code CJ20N. And again, the key to this particular recording is to check this launch SAP GUI box. And again, we saw that Process Runner recognized that error and made an automatic correction for that. Now, you won't see this particular box work with all Enjoy transactions. And so where the Enjoy transaction cannot be recorded with the transaction technology, can't be solved by clicking this checkbox, the answer is to utilize our GUI scripting technology. So some Enjoy transactions, you may need to use our GUI scripting technology to be able to record the transaction successfully. And you can go to our cloud where we have several GUI scripts already created for certain enjoy transactions. Thank you for watching.